I wanted to ask you, and I know this is a big question, and, but you were starting to go into it, the, <laughs> somebody trying to start to find out what their mission is, what they love. I mean, they're, they're, maybe they've been laid off or they're going through a transition and now they have an opportunity or they're taking the opportunity to make a change. What is the, besides getting your book, because obviously that's what the book's about in a large part, mm -hmm. the beginning of figuring out what your mission is and what you love. Well, if you were to take a person's history in the world of work, whether they're 27 or whether they're 68, if you were to take their whole history, you'd call that a career. Mm -hmm. That's their career mm -hmm. in, the, in, in their lifetime. You break that down. Say we had a vocational microscope and you could put that under a vocational microscope. Its first atoms would be fields. You, every career has a person going in certain fields. Right, right now it's supposed to be three to five in an average person's lifetime. Put a field under it and it breaks down to jobs. Put a job under the microscope, it breaks down into tasks and uh, uh, roles and, and so on. Put the task under the microscope, you get down to transferable skills, skills people have which they uh, kind of burnished and sharpened mm -hmm. in whatever they've been doing thus far in their life, but they're completely transferable to any other field that they want to transfer it to. So we always tell people uh, when you're doing that exercise with the one piece of paper, mm -hmm. we say the, you can put down any information you want to, but there's $1 information, there's $5 information, <laughs> there's $20 information, and be sure and look for the $20 information, which is what are your favorite skills? Mm -hmm. This uh, Transferable skills are always verbs and they always end in ING, like organizing, gathering, and, and communicating, so yeah, speaking, okay. Okay. and so on. Uh -huh. And if they start with that, that builds a foundation for their being able to figure out what they're going to do with their life because that's the, those are the $20 bill information piece, pieces that really make sense. Um, how about, you coined the phrase informational interviewing, right? Yes. Yeah. What role does informational, inter could you define it for the audience and sure. the role it plays? Um. Uh, it's actually indebted to uh, men, t two people who are dead. One was a man named Bernard Haldane. One was a man named John Crystal. And what they came up with was the idea that if you save the idea of interviewing just for the employment, just when you get there and you want to be hired, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage because there are other kinds of interviewing you could do before that mm -hmm. that would let you warm up and let you get at ease and meeting people. And so the first one was called practice field survey where you just have a curiosity. You wonder how they tell the weather. So you go to a weather station and you say, I, I needed five minutes of your time. I want to know how you predict the weather. Or you, you're interested in classical music. You go to a classical music station and say, I want to know how you pick the pieces that you play and, and stuff like that. Purely uh, has no investment in, in anything you intend to do as a living and hence it's stress-free mm -hmm. and you can take somebody with you. The next one is informational interviewing and the next one is employment, uh, interviewing for employment. Inter informational interviewing is going and talking to people to get information. It's like if we had an analog, we'd compare it to trying on a new suit. You know, you, you don't just take it off the rack, hand it to the clerk at the <laughs> front door it. and say, I'll take it. And um, we have a similar mechanism we can do with our jobs, with the jobs that we are thinking about doing. Uh, it involves not going and talking to an employer. It involves going and talking to a worker uh, who is doing exactly what it is you're thinking about doing. Mm -hmm. So you go and talk to them and there's four traditional questions. One is, how'd you get into this? Uh, second one is, what do you like best about it? Third is, what do you hate about it? <laughs> and, the, and the fourth one is, who else would you suggest I go talk to? Mm -hmm. And informational interviewing is a, a up-to-date way of finding information because even the internet can't keep, keep up with what's happening right this minute. That's right. And so uh, it's a very, very fruitful way for people to get practice in interviewing because they're completely fearless after they've done informational interviewing. A yeah, lot. they've met so many people. Yeah, right? yeah. And at the same time, they've got really current information about what sucks about the job, what they <laughs> like best about the job, and that sort of thing. They need to know because the statistics are that, I, I know it was for the Bay Area years ago, so I'm not sure this would still hold, but 28% of the people that found jobs weren't in those jobs one month later. That's yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. 
And that's because they they find out if they like the job after they've taken oh, it. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and say, I don't want this job and I, I quit. But if you do informational interviewing, you can find out whether you're going to like the kind of job because you're talking to people who are doing it. Right, And right. so that's the point of the informational interviewing.